Good morning and welcome to our online service on Sunday the 21st of June 2020. My name is Katerina olsen Gislasko, and I am standing here in All Saints Church in Isleworth in West London. You're most welcome if you belong to our local community, our church family, you're most welcome if you're tuning in from anywhere else around the world. We have nearly uh, come to the first six months of 2020. And you may remember, those of you who were here in church back in January, that we began this year with a vision. A vision because it's the 50th year since the, this part of the church was built in 1970. And um, this card, which I have at home on the wall of my kitchen, says this is a year of celebration and challenge. And a challenge it has been. So we are going to spend the next four weeks looking at um, how we theologically can look at a time of challenge like this. Where is God in these times? Ali, our vicar, is going to preach and give us a reflection on that a little later in the service. We're blessed today with the Trentham family who are leading us in worship. Today is also Father's Day, so we want to celebrate all the fathers amongst us and give thanks to God for them. And we are also realistic in saying that for some, the whole area of fatherhood and the whole idea of Father's Day can be a real challenge. If that applies to you, my heart goes out to you. We're going to um, read um, from the psalm. Psalm 86, verses 1 to 3. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life. For I am devoted to you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. For to you do I cry all day long. Father God, in these challenging times, we feel poor and needy. But Father God, you are our God. So we pray to you, be gracious to us and help us to cry to you in these times. We thank you for this new day and we pray that you will be with us here in the service and throughout the day and the week. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's sing our first hymn. Immortal, invisible.
we are going to say sorry to God in the prayer of the confession. Lord, we are sorry for things we have said, thought and done. We are sorry that our words, our thoughts and our actions have hurt you and others. Forgive us, we pray. Amen. And together we receive God's forgiveness in the absolution. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few notices. Since the beginning of lockdown, those of us who are part of All Saints Isleworth do uh, meet up during Zoom coffees on Sundays and Wednesdays. Please check your email for login details for this. This week we have two birthdays at All Saints. It's Marion, happy birthday to you, and Catherine, happy birthday to you. We'd like to sing to you now. This is a special message for Katrin and Marion. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Marion, Marion and Katrin. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> As we have been mentioning for uh, two, three weeks now, the Ivy Bridge Food Bank, which is not very far from us, is in need of various items. They include long life products, tinned and packed, um, toiletries and household cleaning products. If you're happy to donate any of this, and the full list is in the email, I should add, uh, please bring your donations either to the co-op in South Street or directly to All Souls Church in Northcote Road. They are open to um, take donations on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 9 to 12. But please give them a ring just before you go just to check that somebody is really there on that day. Even though we don't meet in church, it costs a lot to run it. Here is a video about giving at this time. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable. And caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity generosity that is a hallmark of a lived-out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We'd like to share his peace with each other. So I would like to share God's peace with you wherever you are, maybe in your living rooms, maybe in your kitchens. Um, and I share that peace from where I am in All Saints Isleworth. And you may want to share Christ's peace with those whom you live with, if you share um, a home with somebody, and if not, then share Christ's peace by contacting somebody later today. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We suggest a children's craft and um, we have um, referred quite a lot to a web page called Together at Home. 
It's a Facebook page actually, and if you want to, if you're a parent, you may want to join the group so that you are sent ideas for prayers and crafts and what you can do en famille um, throughout the week. Um, so the link to this week's uh, craft and prayer page is in the email. Um, we are going to um, have our Bible reading now. And after that we'll sing and then we shall listen to Ali's reflections on where is God in these challenging times. The reading is Isaiah chapter 55 verses 6 to 13. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it spring, bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We can. Today we're going to start a series of four talks when we think about God and COVID-19. 
Over the next four weeks, we're going to think about four questions that Bishop Graham shared with the clergy a while ago. The first question is, where is God in COVID-19? And we're going to be thinking about God's providence. The second question is, how do we think of this time? And we're going to be looking at the story of the exile. In week three, we're going to think about what needs to change. And we're going to be thinking about God calling us to repentance. And in week four, we're going to be thinking about how do we live in the meantime and what the Holy Spirit is doing in us and amongst us. So today, we're going to think about where is God in COVID-19? Let's pray and ask God to help us. Heavenly Father, you know how bewildered we've been at times during this COVID-19 pandemic and crisis. Many of us have stories to tell of ways that you've helped us. But we are also puzzled and don't understand sometimes where you are or what you're doing. So be with us now, we pray, and speak to us for Jesus' sake. Amen. We're going to start by thinking of some of the ways that people in the world explain things that happen to them. Some people might say that something is a matter of fate. Others might say it's all down to random chance. Others who believe in astrology might say that everything was written in the stars. For us as Christians, we want to say that God is at work in the world. We may not always be able to understand it, but we do believe that God is at work in the world. And we call this God's providence. We see God at work in the world to overcome the forces of evil that are trying to destroy it. In Ephesians 6, verse 12, the Apostle Paul puts this very succinctly. He says, Our struggle is not against enemies of the blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. As Christians, we know that God loves us and wants nothing but good for us. So just how do we reconcile the tragedy of COVID-19 and all the sufferings that it's brought to so many in different ways with this idea of God loving us and wanting nothing but good for us? Some people might say that COVID-19 is God's judgment on humankind for failing to live as he wants us to live. There may be an aspect of needing to repent, and we're going to hear about that in a couple of weeks' time. But if we believe that God is good, that he loves us and wants nothing but good for us, then this cannot be the whole answer to the question, where is God in COVID-19? There has to be something more. We can see some of the answers to our questions in our reading today from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 to 13. So let's think about that and see what it has to say to us as we continue to live through the COVID-19 crisis. Verse 6 at the start of the passage. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Over these months of lockdown, there's been a massive upsurge in the country of people wanting to pray. Many churches have had greater numbers watching their online services than normally attended before lockdown began. Churches running online courses on the basics of the Christian faith, such as Alpha or Start or Christianity Explored, have had large numbers of people signing up for them. 
Here at All Saints Isleworth, we've been putting some form of short prayer time up on our YouTube most days since the lockdown began. And a number of people have emailed me to say how helpful these have been. So one of the ways in which we see God at work in the current crisis is through people searching for God in larger numbers than have done so for many years in our country. And I believe that that can only be a good thing. So let's each of us continue to seek the Lord while he may be found. In verse 7, Isaiah says, Let the wicked forsake their way, the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to God, for he will abundantly pardon. In our country, we've seen a whole variety of responses to the crisis. Some people have chosen to respond with the very worst of human behaviour. We think about all the panic buying and hoarding of food at the start of the lockdown. Apparently, Curry's sales of freezers went up by over 200% when the panic buying was at its worst. Or we think of the man who deliberately spat on a couple of railway workers, knowing that he had COVID-19, and how one of those, a mother of young children, died. We've seen the very worst that people can do. But on the other hand, we've also seen the very best that people can do. Think of the ways that communities have come together to support the vulnerable and those who are housebound, or the weekly clapping for NHS workers and other key workers, or the massive donations that have been made to food banks around the country. In all these and so many other acts of kindness, we see God's love at work. It may well be that the positive effects of the lockdown, in terms of kindness to others, less pressure on the environment because people are working from home, will actually bring about some permanent transformation for good in our society. And in that too, we can see God's hand at work. Verses 10 to 11 say, For as the rain and the snow came down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. I know many of us at All Saints have been praying daily throughout this crisis. We've been listening to what God is saying. We've been praying for the sick and the dying, for all our key workers and for others giving so sacrificially to care for us for our government and health advisors. We've been following the news of the latest medical professionals and the ways that they're finding to tackle the virus for those who are ill and for helping avoid the spread of it. As we pray, we are doing what Paul spoke about in Ephesians 6 verse 12. We are joining in the fight against cosmic powers of darkness, and we are seeing answers to our prayers. In that sense, we see God at work. His word is not returning to him empty, but is accomplishing his purposes of good at work in the world. In all of these things, God is working in the world against the virus, so let's keep praying in faith, knowing that God does hear and answer our prayers. 
And then in verses 8 to, eight to 9, Isaiah writes, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. One of the challenging things about being a Christian and loving God is that we have to learn to be content in the fact that because God is so much bigger and so much more powerful than anything we can imagine, there will be always aspects of him and his work that we can't understand with our finite minds. That's what these verses in Isaiah are reminding us about. We know so much more than we did a hundred years ago, but there are still things that we don't understand. There may always be aspects of the COVID-19 crisis that we never understand. But our response as, as Christians need not be to search for conspiracy theories, but to hold the fact that we do see God at work. But we hold that fact in tension with the fact that we may never understand all of it. And that's simply because we are able to rest in the fact that God is so much bigger and so much more powerful that we, can't, we can imagine. And so we won't ever understand him and know him completely until we see him face to face. And in that way, there may always be aspects of this crisis that we will never understand. In Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 29, we read the story of a man who brought his son to Jesus for Jesus to heal him. The boy was afflicted by an evil spirit that caused him to fall to the ground, unable to speak, unable to do anything. Jesus said to the father, all things can be done for the one who believes. In verse 24, the man replied, I believe, help my unbelief. We can hold that intention for ourselves as we acknowledge that God's thoughts are higher than ours and that we can at one and the same time believe that God is at work in many different ways through COVID-19, but at the same time, we may struggle with why all this has had to happen. Faith and doubt can live alongside each other. So if that's where you find yourself, then you can do no worse than pray the same prayer of the man who brought his son to Jesus for healing. I believe. Help my unbelief. Finally, in verses 12 to 13, Isaiah writes, For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up cypress. Instead of briar shall come up myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This prophecy of Isaiah's was made to God's people when they were living in exile, away from the land that the Lord had given them. They were feeling bleak and hopeless and were doubtful that God would ever fulfill for them his promise of deliverance and return them from exile to their homes. During this COVID-19 crisis, when we've been shut in our homes, not able to meet together with friends and family in person, not able to worship the Lord together in church. It may have felt like a time of exile to us. We'll be thinking more about that next week. But for the moment, these verses from Isaiah say to us that the day will come when we are once more free to come and go as we please. That this time of sadness, stress, fear, worry, 
loss will end and we will once more know joy. I don't know whether you've ever experienced other times of crisis in your life, perhaps serious ill health or the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job. Steve and I have had a number of experiences like that. We've found that in the midst of the crisis, we've often been unable to understand what the Lord was doing or saying or where he was. We felt abandoned by the Lord and not known what was going on. And yet once the crisis has passed and we've been able to look back, we've been able to see where God was. We've been able to see what he was doing and the way that he was actually bringing good things out of a time of suffering. And that's what verses 12 to 13 say to us now. We may not be able to see or understand all that the Lord is doing through the current crisis. We may be full of doubt and even feeling abandoned and let down by God. But the time will come when this has passed. And looking back, we will see what God has done and where he's been. So as we finish... As we continue to see the effects of the COVID-19 crisis at work in our country and the world, as we continue to live with limitations imposed on us by it, let's hold fast to the hope that is set before us and let's keep praying in the certainty that even if we can't see and can't understand, nonetheless, God's love is at work in the world for good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are at work in our world today through your love, your strength, and your power. When we are puzzled, when we feel abandoned or lost, we pray that like your people in Isaiah's day, we will hold on to your promises and that one day we will look back and see where you have been and what you've been doing. So Lord, help us to hold fast to that hope that we have in you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
for us to um, do a little prayer activity and that's also something that is from the Together at Home Facebook page. It's called I Can Pray the Weather and if you receive our emails you can print it or have a look at it um, on your, uh, in your email. Um, otherwise you can print it or look at it at the Together at Home page. The weather is different every day, but God who created the weather never changes. So um, use your creativity, just uh, with some um, paper and pen in, and pens in different colors, crayons maybe, maybe watercolors. You can draw or you can paint your prayer. You may want to um, draw or paint a sun and that might be a happy prayer saying thank you to God for things you're happy for. You may be feeling really sad. You may want to draw a dark cloud with rain coming out of it, sharing the sad things that you are going through in your life in a prayer. You may want to um, draw a wind. We've been praying, come Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is often likened to a wind. You may feel as if you're in the middle of a horrible storm. Maybe there is even lightning at the moment. You may want to draw that. And that drawing, or if it's a painting, will be a prayer in itself. Asking God to be present with you in the middle of that storm. And um, I have a painting here of a rainbow. And this painting is a prayer in itself. It's a prayer of thank you to God for his promises of hope and it's a prayer to God to ask for hope for many who need it at the moment and that includes me as well. Let's pray and we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Father God, thank you for rainbows Thank you that you created them to show us your promise of hope. Thank you that you only give us hope in these really challenging times. We pray now for all those in the world who are in need of hope and comfort at the moment. And we name before you, quietly in our own hearts, specific places and groups of individuals who are on our hearts. We also want to pray for our local community and we want to name before you here specific individuals and specific groups of people who are in real need of your hope and comfort. We also want to pray for ourselves, Lord. I am in need of your hope and your comfort at the moment. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love. Defend you on every side 
and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's work we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes, we send them on the risen Christ. Amen. I wish you a wonderful um, rest of today, this Sunday, whether you're celebrating Father's Day or not, um, and a really good week. We're going to end our service now by singing together the song indescribable and the Trentons are leading. Unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart, and you love me yourself.